Hello there. In this video, we will be learning about friction and its types. Let's say we have a box over here and I am trying to push this box. So as you are able to see, I am trying to push it. So I am applying the force. But for some reasons, the box is not moving. So why is the box not moving? Let's try to understand this. So in this case, the force that is responsible for the box not moving is what is called the force of friction. So the force of friction is a force that opposes the relative motion between the two surfaces that are in contact with each other. In simple words, whenever you try to slide or move something across a surface, friction tries to stop or slow it down. Now let's dig a little deeper and understand what causes this opposition, what causes this friction. Let's imagine that this is surface 1 and this is surface 2 and these are the two objects that are trying to slide against one another or there is a relative motion about to happen between these two. Now the moment one of them slides over the another, so if we see from a microscopic level, there are a lot of imperfections between these surfaces. Now what actually happens is, the moment you try to slide this over this, because of these imperfections, they will get stuck into one another and that is what results in friction. So the force of friction opposes the relative motion. What it means that, suppose this is a surface and this is a box, I am trying to make the box move in this particular direction. Let's say I am trying to make this move in the east direction. Then the force of friction on this particular block would be in the opposite direction, would be in the west direction. So we can see this over here as well. So as I'm applying the force, as you can see the applied force is being shown with an orange arrow. So there is the red arrow also that is coming into picture and that is what is called the frictional force. And this force is responsible for the box not moving despite a force being acted on this particular block. Let's understand the different types of friction. So we have these two types of friction. One is called the static friction and one is called the sliding friction. In a very simple terms, static friction is the friction that is acting on an object when it is not moving. You are trying to move an object but it is not moving. It, the motion hasn't started yet. The friction in that particular scenario is called the static friction. Now once the object starts moving, let's say the object is moving in this particular direction, the friction on this object at this point in time is what is called the sliding friction. So let's understand static friction in detail. Static friction is a type of friction that prevents an object from starting to move when you apply a force to it. Like in this case, the box is at rest and the moment I am applying the force at this particular time, the force of friction is sort of equal to the applied force in such a way that the box is not moving. So we can see this from a value perspective. As you can see, I'm applying a 22 Newton force. The force of friction is also 22 Newton. At this point in time, the friction force is the static friction because the object's motion hasn't started yet. The moment I'm applying 35 Newton or 34 Newton, the friction force also matches that particular thing. Now, as I keep on increasing the applied force, the friction force also increases and there's a maximum possible value to the static friction. Like in this case, this value is 125 Newton. So what we just saw over here is that the static friction is a self-adjusting force. As I was increasing the applied force, the static friction was also increasing and it was increasing up to a maximum value. So it increases up to a maximum limit to counteract the applied force, but only as much needed to prevent the motion. So suppose if I'm applying a force of five Newton, the static friction will only be five Newton. If I'm applying a force of let's say 125 Newton, the value of static friction would be 125 Newton. Let's see what happens if I increase the applied force beyond 125 Newton. Now the moment I'm increasing the applied force to more than 125 Newton, you are able to see that the object has started sliding. So we can clearly say that in this case, the static friction will not be there. There would be another kind of friction because at this particular point in time, the object is not stationary. It is moving. And we know that the static friction is there when the object hasn't started moving yet. The friction that comes into picture at this point in time is called the sliding friction because the object is in motion. The sliding friction, also called the kinetic friction, is the force that opposes the motion of an object once it's already sliding over the surface. Now you can see that even if I'm increasing the applied force, the sliding friction value is not increasing. It is remaining the same. So we can say that the value of sliding friction doesn't depend upon the applied force. So as we just saw, 
the sliding friction is not something that is changing with respect to the applied force it is having a constant value so we can say that unlike static friction the sliding friction has a constant value for a given pair of surface and does not adjust with the force i hope you are now familiar with what is friction what are the two types of friction and some important characteristics of these two types of friction see you in the next video till then bye bye